There's a mystery afoot. We have to solve this mystery. You and I together. Oh God, no, not again. Don't know what, what what that was. Hello there, internet dwellers. Welcome to the monster inside. It's um, a metaphor. One of those philosophical incantations. I'm using words I don't understand, but I think what it's trying to say is. We stopped looking for monsters under our beds when we realised they were inside us. That's a quote from Batman. But yeah, this is an audiovisual novel. I remember seeing Jacksepticeye play it. I clicked on the video. I was like, uh, saw him play a little bit. I was like, right, I gotta play this on my own. So that's what I usually do. I usually, I usually steal, steal my ideas, ideas from other people. There's a lot of tilt going on here. Stay there, you. St hang on. There we go. So yeah, we're gonna start the game. We're gonna get into this. My head pounded, ears still ringing <coughs> slightly. Some of the worst nightmares I'd had in years left me feeling like I'd been punched in the jaw. But just like any other day, I dragged myself to the office. Ooh, hello. There was another notice on the door from Mayor Vinetti's office. Permits out of date. They didn't like me much and were trying to drown me in paperwork. It was a slow month, weeks since I'd had any real case to work on. So I passed the time pacing the office, smoking and staring at the mirror in the corner. Safely covered with an old bedsheet. <coughs> well, you're not really sure you're staring in it then, are you? You're staring at a bedsheet. You're staring at a ghost, pretty much. I don't dare look at my own reflection. I'm too afraid of what I might see. Afraid someday I might have to face what I really am. The girl came in so quiet I nearly choked on my cigarette. <coughs> mister, please, you gotta help me, mister. Okay, calm down now and sit and talk slow. Yeah, what can I help you with? Okay, I'll go with the first one. I'll be a nice one. Okay, thanks. It's just no one will listen to me. Just tell me your tale. I'm listening. She eyed me with just a dash of suspicion as I tossed back a handful of pills and chased them with a swig of whiskey. I could tell this might take a while. Her name was Lily Lily. She told me she was his mistress, the man all over the newspaper, the infamous banker, Mr. Reginald Farnsworth. For Mr. Farnsworth was a drunk, philandering bastard. But this girl seemed genuinely concerned that he had recently gone missing. Less concerned about the fact that Mr. Farnworth's wife had just turned up dead in Central Park two nights ago. How do you turn up dead? Turn up dead. Because turning up to a place is like walking in and going, Oh, sorry I'm late guys. You can't turn up like, I'm dead. <laughs> you don't understand. He just couldn't have done it. He hated his wife, but he couldn't have killed her. Everyone thinks it was him and no one believes me. He's gotta be in trouble. I ain't saying I, I believe you, but what makes you think he's in danger? Case looks pretty simple to me. Go for the first one. Well, Mr. Uh... Jack. You can just call me Jack. Jack, whoever did that to his wife must have been the one who took him. He would have never left without me. He promised me. I'm sure Mr. Farnworth promised this poor girl a lot of things. Please, the cops won't listen to me and they want to bring him in on charges. They gotta prove it wasn't him before they find him. Honestly, I doubt they're in too much of a hurry. Farnsworth had practically the entire police force in his deep pockets. Probably why they hadn't found much yet. If they found him and brought him in, it would be due to public pressure. Sometimes a mob with pitchforks is more dangerous than one man with money. You've got my curiosity, but you might not like what I found. I can help you. We'll get to the bottom of it, don't you worry now. Okay. Oh, thank you, Mr. J Jack. Thank you. But please be careful. I don't think this was just any murderer or kidnapper. I think it was... I think it was... A, a beast. Beast. The word struck me funny, like when you jar your elbow on a hard corner. Not a word many use these days, except in hushed whispers and bedtime stories for children. Oh, they were real enough, all right. They just got better at hiding, controlling their unseemly urges. But I hadn't seen any monsters in nearly 15 years. Well, that's definitely an interesting theory. I can help you. We'll get to the bottom of it. Don't you worry now. I've already said that one. Leave the detective's work to me. Let's not jump to conclusions here. There we go. I just have a feeling about it. Something tells me you can't get to the bottom of it. You're good at this sort of thing. Am I? Sure. Can't you see how busy I am with cases? I replied a little too harshly. Sarcasm wasn't my strong suit. I reassured her some more and sent her on her way. I didn't want to scare her. 
but I warned her before she left to keep her doors locked and call me if she saw anything suspicious. <laughs> I didn't know if she was in any danger herself, but better safe than sorry. That night I made my way down to Central Park. It was a long shot, but maybe there was something there the cops had missed. Next chapter. Jesus, I cl complete a chapter already? The scene was already picked clean by the cops days ago, but I've got a knack for finding the things others overlook. Oh, okay. A knack, more of a, a symptom, a condition. Other, less useful symptoms I kept in check. But for the time being, my keen sense of smell would come in handy. It was faint, but I could smell it before I even approached a police line. The scent was less of a thing and more of an emotion. Seduction. <laughs> Jesus. A strangely familiar smell. I expected the scent of trepidation or maybe even outright fear, but Mrs. Farnsworth seemed to have been at the height of pleasure when she left this world. Brought new meaning to a crime of passion. Pushing the thought from my mind, it was time to get down to business. Investigate the scene. Okay. What's this? Muddy footprints everywhere. Difficult to pick out anything from the, the prints the cops left in their haste. But cops don't wear $2,000 pairs of khaki nose. Khaki nose? Is that how you say it? It looked like Mr. Farnsworth was there that night and walked away on his own two feet. A burn mark on a nearby tree caught my eye. I ran my finger along its length and felt a chill down my spine. This wasn't just any burn mark. This was the mark of an ancient magic. It's doubtful the cops would have picked up on it. Could Lily have been right? Something unnatural was at play here. But I was no stranger to the strange. Alright, come on man, let's stop being so... After looking around for a while longer, I realized the park had given up all it was hiding from me. So I trudged back to my apartment and my head hit my pillow like it owed me money. This guy's poetic, isn't he? The next morning I was reeling from another bout of ghoulish nightmares. But I tried to hide my discomfort when I saw Lily was already sitting outside my office. She waited wordlessly as I unlocked the door and ripped down another notice from the mayor's office. I motioned for her to step inside. Seemingly afraid of what I might say, she finally worked out the courage to ask. So, so what did you find? Well, I've got some good news, Farnsworth. Might still be alive. Not sure about beasts, but something unnatural was at play. Might be right to worry about monsters. Okay. Unnatural? What do you mean? A spell's mark. Rarely seen these days, but unmistakable. I can't give you details. I'm looking into it. What does that mean? What about Reggie? Do you know where he might be? Found his footprints. Seemed like he got out safely. There were signs he was at the scene and slipped away. My tone was indifferent towards her as I turned and grabbed a bottle from my desk drawer. A dryness in my throat made it difficult to swallow my meds. But you don't know where he went. Do you think the news this morning is related? Why don't you shut the fuck up, bitch? What news is that? Haven't you heard? Yeah, but maybe you should tell me what you know. Nope. Rough night followed by a rough morning. They found the police chief's wife dead down by the docks. We see it happen last night. Let me guess. Chief Amato is missing too. My face might have betrayed a hint of satisfaction as she confirmed my suspicions, but it faded quickly. Mato was a shit cop and a shit chief. He was half the reason I left the force, but now his wife was dead and I had more questions than I did the day before. The gears in my head started to spin, which wasn't helped by the splitting pain at my temples. I told Lily I needed time to work and she left slightly dejected, wanting more answers than I could. That night, after the cops had cleared out of the docks, I would slip down and see what I could uncover concerning Mrs. Amato's. Untimely demise. Next chapter. God damn. Getting through these chapters quick, aren't I? I didn't know I was like this. God damn. The cold air smells strongly of salt and oil and. Could it be? That smell again. Like someone had bottled pure arousal and used this perfume. I think you just got some kind of sexual problems, mate. It hit me like a forgotten memory. <laughs> But the central theme soon gave way to a rush of adrenaline. I knew exactly what the scent reminded me of, and it scared me more than not knowing. I looked down at my hands, shaking. The nightmares. The headaches. No, 
I was better now. Reformed. Wait, you're thinking that is him? He's the monster? I had to focus. No jumping to conclusions. Follow the evidence. That would, that would explain the nightmares. Because he's actually killing people. Let's investigate the scene. What's this? Red Phoenix cigarettes. Same shitty brand I smoke every day. Everyone's got their vice. Um, what about this? There. Just there. The smallest piece of purple fabric. Torn and caught in a splinter of a board. The police report didn't say anything about Mrs. Amato wearing purple. And it was certainly of a quality that you wouldn't expect down here. Don't see too many high society types around flaunting royal purple threads. I pulled out my own pack of reds and lit up. I could already feel another headache coming on. But looking out over the waves seemed to help me forget. The cold helped me push down the uncomfortable thoughts that had been bubbling to the top of my brain. Yeah, this guy is definitely a murderer. I honestly don't remember the walk back to the office. Apparently I spent the night in my easy chair. The air from the docks lingered on my clothes. It was still dark out. No, I checked the clock. How long had I been out? Had I really slept through the entire next day? A newspaper was sitting under the door. As I stood to fetch it, I nearly fell over. A wave of nausea hit me like a ton of bricks. I steadied myself and regained my composure. Before I even picked up the paper, I could already read the headline. Breaking! Mayor missing! Wife found dead! Two cases is a coincidence. Three is a pattern. The cops would come asking questions soon. They knew I had a history of antagonizing all the victims. I stumbled to my desk and slammed back three days worth of inhibitor pills. I couldn't take any chances. I had to investigate the scene to be sure. I threw on my jacket and went to the door. Lily caught me off guard on the other side. Jack, where are you off to? I've been trying to reach you all day. I'm sorry, Lily, but I don't have time to talk. I have to go. I've just been busy. I'm off to Mrs. Venetti's crime scene. Let's go for the top one. Okay, but we need to talk when you get back. Stay safe. Don't tell me how to live my life, bitch. She gave me a soft kiss on the cheek as I rushed off. Part of me wanted to stay and tell her it would be okay, but would be a lie. Next chapter. Jesus, I'm getting loads of achievements for this. The alley was located just behind the high-rise apartments where Mayor Vinetti and his wife lived. I could tell the police were spooked now. The crime scene was even sloppier than the last. They hadn't even bothered to submit the trash into evidence. Investigate the scene. Why wouldn't they at least look through the dumpster? It seemed untouched. No one wants to do the dirty work. But I know how to find the good stuff. It really doesn't take long if you know what to look for. Like with bags usually means someone was dumping documents. If you were lucky, they didn't bother to shred them. Jackpot. Shell companies. Shady stock traders. Bribes. I knew Mayor Venetti was a crook, but this was unbelievable. And there was more letters between Mayor Venetti and Chief Amato talking about me. How they were trying to get me shut down. They didn't like me sneaping around crime scenes all the time. Well... They weren't here to stop me snooping around this one. Um, Vinetti's car. If he's still alive, why wouldn't he have left in his car? It didn't make any sense. I honestly wasn't too motivated to find him, but the stakes were too high, and my bet was edging towards the unthinkable. As I searched around for anything that might assuage my fears, I caught the scent again. It's overwhelmed by other senses with undulating... Undulating pleasure. It was intoxicating. A weapon used on the weak world. A weapon I knew all too well, though it had been too many years since I had used it. Was there another like me? Was I being framed? It wasn't possible. Was it? I was taking my inhibitors. I was formed. But the nightmares, the headaches, the memory lapses, I couldn't even trust myself. I started walking back out the alley when something shiny caught my eye. A watch. Not just any watch, though. My watch. How long had my wrist been bare? Surely I had dropped it when I first came down the alley. I checked the time just before I left the office, hadn't I? Or had I used the wall clock? I couldn't be sure. I couldn't be sure of anything. So I ran. Well, run away from your problems, mate. Jesus Christ. Man up, eh? 
I don't know why I ran back to the office. The cops would probably show up any minute to knock the door down and cart me away. They would put it together before long. Maybe it would be best for everyone if I had simply faced my own reflection. But Lily was still there, waiting for me. Jack, what's wrong? You look like you've seen a ghost. My own ghost came back to haunt me from the past. You're not making any sense, Jack. Come sit down. You don't understand. You're not safe around me. I took a good last look at her as I prepared to shove her out the door. I noticed she was wearing the same thing she had when she first came to my office three days ago. A beautiful purple dress. Odds that I hadn't really noticed before, but it made her seem out of place, out of time. And it was frayed around the edges, torn in places. My chair caught my fall as my knees failed me. It was you. You are the monster. Succubus. Oh, Jack. We are one and the same. You and I, we are both monsters. I'm simply more honest with myself. There's no such thing as reformation. Those pills you take only make you dull. Beasts like us should never suppress our true natures, as you have, Incubus. Those men were probably dead too, now I figured. She probably took them to her lair and harvested their seed. The fuck? You've done all this just to wake me up. You could say that, though it seemed enough just to have you doubt yourself. You believed you were still capable of such horrors, which means deep down, you probably are. You can't escape it. Now I needed to complete the deed. You took my watch, messed with my head. Oh, don't act like I didn't do you a favor. Those men hated you and wanted you gone, and now they are gone. I mustered the strength to stand again, moving casually to the window by the corner. She was right about one thing. I was dull, weak compared to her. If I refused her and she attacked me, I was a dead man. I had to keep her talking. I've ne never met a succubus who seduces and kills women. Oh, please, such a 14th century stereotype. I don't discriminate when it comes to pleasures of the flesh. Oh, wow. She but I do still need an incubus like yourself to take the tainted seed I've harvested from those awful men and plant it among the fertile masses for me. I'm tired of draining my lovers just to survive. I'm ready to settle down and start a family. <laughs> That maniacal laugh. I positioned myself carefully, making sure she was looking at my direction. Sorry, but I'm not your guy. With a quick flick of wrist, I whipped the old bedsheet off of the corner mirror. Lily was blinded by her own reflection and stuck into the mirror with a painful, monstrous scream. Trapped. Should have my own eyes, I pulled a revolver from my desk side drawer, aimed it at the mirror, and fired. So what, what? What? Succubus? Well, there we go, guys. It turned out that um, Lily was a succubus. And a succubus is a female demon believed to have sexual intercourse with sleeping men. <coughs> so there we go, guys. She was um, <coughs> having sex with sleeping men. I don't, I don't know. They were found dead, weren't they? So I guess I have I have no idea. It was pretty cool, but it just felt like um, reading simulator. But then again, it's a visual novel, isn't it? Audio visual. It's pretty cool. It's pretty original, to be fair. I like the 3D aspect of it. It's not just 2D in like a comic strip. But there we go, guys. That was the monster inside. And just remember, there's a monster inside of all of us. If you guys did enjoy, leave a like rating down below. And if you're new to the channel, why not subscribe for more games like this? Thank you for watching, guys. And go back to your football game now. Go on. Hey, who's winning? I don't know. Just make sure you don't...